Okay, so uh, the next step is going to use a uh, date as a variable. Now, what is date in this situation? The date should be considered to be a brand new data type, like this, uh, date, birthday, right? And be able to create uh, a, a date as a single object. Apparently, that single object should be able to handle all of this, right? All of the uh, month, day, year, serial, serial uh, conversion, and everything else. Uh, but to begin with, uh, we should be able to encapsulate month, day, and year inside that uh, specific object. And you can see that using the dot syntax, we should be able to set uh, uh, the proper variables inside the date and handle it uh, as a single concept, including perhaps using the brand new variable birthday and sending it to see out and be able to display the information. So the benefits of this approach uh, compared to this earlier approach with individual integers and indi individual functions is that all logic is now done around a single variable named birthday, right? So we're now focusing on the single va variable as opposed to focusing on a whole bunch of different little pieces. Uh, so the questions are, uh, what is date, uh, what is the syntax, and uh, what happens when we say uh, send this birthday to C out, right? So we need to uh, go through all the technicalities to uh, make this transition from this approach to this approach using date as a single variable. So we say that uh, integers and the doubles and uh, other types uh, are all uh, built-in types or fundamental data types or primitive data types. And um, if we make an observation about them, what we can say that they all have a size. For instance, a char, a character variable, is like a little like this. And it's just like one byte in size on most uh, platforms. Uh, integer is like two bytes in size, 16 bit. Integer is typically 32 bits, and this is like four, uh, four bytes in computer memory. And double, finally, on, uh, on the computer architecture is eight bytes long, it's 64 bit size. That's why double is uh, the keyword double stands for double precision point, a uh, floating point uh, uh, variable. So uh, the built-in types have sizes. And uh, those sizes are uh, obviously important because when compiler needs to allocate memory to store these variables in memory, obviously the size becomes uh, uh, an important thing. Um, the next thing is uh, that uh, they all come with operations. And these operations are simply um, uh, implemented through, um, uh, through operators. We can say, you know, we can say plus, like we did over here, right? So we can take one integer and add another integer to it. So we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus operator that uh, determines the remainder. Uh, of the division. And so these operations come pre-built, supported, really supported by the hardware uh, that come with uh, these primitive data types. So the size and behavior define what the type is. The type determines operations. So basically the data type that we use comes with a set of operations that are available for the data type. Um, and uh, what, it, what else it says here is it, say, it says here each arithmetic operation defined for integer is like anonymous inline function, right? So function like add, subtract, multiply, and so forth, right? So there is a similarity between the arithmetic uh, operators and uh, little tiny functions which would uh, accomplish a similar thing. Now, with this in mind, we say that a program always is, by the definition of computer hardware, 
the set of variables or objects in memory and functions that manipulate them. Variables store data or values and functions define computer operations, uh, algorithms, uh, and all sorts of actions like displaying values or getting values from the user, uh, input, output, math, and so forth. So the functions provide convenient way to encapsulate various computations. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, it would be interesting to consider bringing functions and variables together under one umbrella and consider them to uh, be put together to create a brand new data type. And this is a proposed uh, view of this. For example, we can create a date which is the name that we invent ourselves, right? And name and define it as a class. And say, okay, we want to add a variable to it, and perhaps we can encapsulate a serial date inside uh, this date uh, class. And then we can also have a bunch of functions. And uh, these functions uh, we can uh, recognize as set date, get month, get day, and get year, right? For instance, uh, something very similar to what we did uh, with uh, uh, with the, the functions when we converted month, day, and year to a serial date, and then did the reverse conversion from serial date to back to month, a day, and year like this. So before we continue, uh, it's a very common practice to keep these declarations of brand new data types in a separate header file. So let's create a separate header file. Uh, let me switch back to the source view like this. I already have this header file over here. Um, so I guess I could create brand new header file or I can use... Um, uh, separate uh, separate file. Let's create a separate file. Uh, jump right here just to demonstrate that uh, we can have multiple header files and multiple implementation files in our application. Let's start with new header file. I'm jumping to my file view and say new text document. And rename this to say uh, class uh, serial date. I'm not saying that this is an ideal name for uh, the name of the file, but uh, for the sake of presentation uh, and demonstration here, we should be able to recognize the names of uh, these files easily. So I just say class serial date. I will rename it. And here I will just drag and drop this brand new file right here. And once again, the same routine. Uh, I will uh, basically, I will place the uh, name of the file at the top and I will add the corresponding header guard. I will just place the side by side for our view. So I typically right click on the tab and say uh, copy full path and add it as a comment uh, like this. And just keep the name. I don't need the full path. I just keep it as a comment. Then, of course, uh, I will need uh, something like this to protect uh, the content of the header. We need to add the header header guard to it. It's easy to copy and uh, copy and paste, but you must remember that you need to take the new name and replace this with the new name. The whole idea of the header guard is that it has to be unique per file, for each header file. So the uniqueness typically is deriving from the unique name of the file. So I will replace it here and here and also at the bottom. The syntax requires and if, uh, the preprocessor syntax, and I'll just copy and paste this three times. So the important thing is to remember to keep this unique because if you just copy and paste it from one header file to another header file, you're making a big mistake. The header guards 
are simple, but they work only if they're unique in every header file that we create. And now that we now that we have this brand new header file, I just copy and paste this uh, class inside. This uh, 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 this brand new header file. Uh, three weeks ago, we used something that said struct. So when you use struct, everything inside the struct becomes public, like this. If you use a class instead, the class keyword instead of instead of struct everything becomes private private means that uh, the stuff here uh, the idea of the private is that everything that's private is going to be accessible only inside the class and not outside so for instance if I created my class date and if I want to use it inside my main function I can no longer go directly and access this integer because by default it is going to be private and i don't have to say private explicitly although i can but by default class makes it private if i made it a struct then this thing would be available without restrictions uh to access in other places like main in other functions outside of this class uh, so, but uh, let's try class as um, as an example of uh, 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 an object which is trying to protect its member variables. By the way, this is a member, an example of member variable. Uh, all the variables that we place inside the class are uh, designated as member variables of that class. Uh, and then uh, functions are also member functions. Because now these functions being declared over here, they're no longer freestanding functions. They're not free functions anymore. They belong to this class. That's why they were re generally referred to them as member functions of this specific class. Okay, so given that, so uh, de uh, a declaration of a class like this uh, introduces brand new data type uh, to the scope. And, uh, of course, um, uh, in order to be able to take advantage of it, what I need to do is I need to essentially add uh, this uh, header file to my main uh, function like this. And if I do, then I should be able to say date. Uh, date something like this right I'd be able to create it as a variable let me try building this and see if this works uh, it may complain that uh, the definitions of these functions are missing but let me give it a try build uh, unreference local variable yes uh, since I'm not uh, using these functions uh, since I'm not using these member functions the linker is able to discard them and ignore them because nobody is using them. The only thing that we do so far, we take this definition of the class and we create a variable of this type. So let's uh, uh, take a break uh, for now. I will stop the recording and we'll continue after the break.